Okay, so what's the difference between assembly language and machine language? Well, this is sum.asm, or sometimes it's called program.asm. It's the example assembly language program for the Nanda Tetris group of chips that we created. You can see the comments are the slash slash, so there's comments flowing through here. And you can see there's variables with the names i and sum. Here's a constant, 100. Here's another variable, at end. So this at sign is declaring a variable. And then the next command after them, if you look, there's sort of pairs. Um, we're sticking 1 into the memory of that variable. We're sticking 0 into the memory of that sum. So this is the m input to the ALU. If we pull this into the CPU emulator, what it does is it takes this assembly language and turns it into binary or machine language. And these ones and zeros have various meanings. Some of them turn off and on our chips. Now sort of in between this documented semi-readable program over here and this unreadable machine code, there's something called a reverse assembler. That's what we're looking at right now. So it's this program, it sort of sits in between this program and the binary. It's looking at the binary and trying to recreate this assembly language. And this is pretty much what you're going to stare at when you debug your program. So the I right here has been replaced by 16. That's memory location 16. The sum here has been replaced by 17. That's memory location 17. So these first um, 0 through 15 memory locations are reserved for special purposes. They have special names. You can read the documentation. This is part of the design of Nanda Tetris. The I comes back right here. There's 16 again. It was here and it's here. Here's at 100. That's a constant. So you're going to see that staying the same at 100. That's not the name of something friendly. At end, you can see the end has been replaced by at 18. So this is a basically a, a jump if greater than command. So if D is positive, it's going to jump to 18. 18 basically says jump over and over again, jump to yourself. So this is an infinite loop. Okay, so what we want to do is compare this CPU emulator program with our picture of the chips that we've hooked up together, sort of, in this picture. Here's the arithmetic logic unit and its output. Here's the arithmetic logic unit in its output. Here's the D register. Here's the D register. So the D register is connected to this D input. And then we have this combination here, the, the memory, that's one of these uh, RAM locations, memory, or the address register being selected by the MUX right here. And the MUX basically is not in this picture, but it sits between one of these rows right here and this address register going into this spot. The RAM is right here, and there's two, four, five, seven, six. This is where all the keyboard input goes in here. So if I choose this and press G, you can see the G going in right here. The screen input is this one, goes into some other spots here in RAM. The program counter is right here. That's this program counter. And then here's the A register. And then the ROM, this is where all of our instructions are. Here's our binary instructions. This is our machine code. Machine language is here in ROM. So these are the instructions that enable the register right here to load or ask it to count or enable this register, this address register. So they're basically all the control signals that we had going into our program counter or into our registers or into our ALU are being turned off and on right here. The load, the reset, the clear, those kinds of things. So this is the CPU emulator with our assembly language program loaded in. It's been turned into binary and then turned back into assembly language as best as we can make it. Um, we're going to slow it down as slow as possible so we can watch what's going on. And we're going to animate we're going to choose program and data flow animation. 
And then what we're going to do is um, single step it through here. So let's get up here to the top of memory. All right. So when I press this button right here, it's going to execute this command. And basically what it does is it takes that 16 and puts it in the address register. So there it goes really slowly into the address register. So now this address register is pointing to this row right here, this row 16 in RAM. Now when I execute this next instruction, it's going to put that 1 in this 16. So now you can see the, the instruction fiddles with the, the D register and send something into the ALU which outputs a 1 and then the 1 comes out of the ALU into the the memory register 16, memory location 16. Now I'm going to press this button and it's going to put 0 and 17. Um, this is because 17 might have powered on with some random number in here or we might be rerunning the same program and there was data left over from the other program in 17. So we're doing something similar. And you can see the program counter here is on, on um, line 2 here in ROM. So this program counter is keeping track of where we're at in here. This address register is keeping track of where we're in RAM. Okay, so now we're going to put 0 into this 17, although it already has 0. All right, so here we go. Let's watch it again. All right, I'm going to speed it up a little bit. This is a little bit too slow. The purpose of the ALU is a bit mysterious because we're not really doing any adding or subtracting or comparing with this. We're not incrementing or decrementing anything with it. You already designed the ALU in Project 3. Or maybe it was 2, I forget. It was that long, complicated program. I had to do a whole bunch of different specific things. Um, maybe we should need to go back and revisit the ALU to figure out what's going on here. Really, for the purposes of this program, you don't really have to pay attention to what's going on in here in the ALU. All right, so now what I'm going to do is multi-step it, and I've got to, well, let's keep it slow and just keep it going. Okay, so it's putting 16 back in this register. And now it's taking whatever's in the D register and putting it back into 16. Excuse me, it's taking what's ever in 16 and putting it in D. I'm sorry, yeah. So this, whatever the contents of um, the memory register 16 were, we've put into D. All right, so D now has 1 in it, and that 1 came as a copy of the 16 right here. All right, now we're going to, uh, not to an address register, because we, we haven't, we're not telling it what to do. So this actually turns into a constant that pops up over here. You see where it says M slash A. So it could be a memory, or it could be an address. And then it's subtracted, and it's negative. Okay. So now we're going to 18. So now we're going to go to register 18. Now we're looking at the contents of D. Jump if it's greater than 218. It didn't jump, so it went down here to 16. That's what it's doing. It's preparing to see whether it's going to jump or not. All right. It didn't jump, so it's going down to this program counter 10. So this is incremented, and when we jump, you'll see this jump a bunch of numbers when we, when we do a, a jump right here. So I'm going to stop it now. What you need to learn to do is to self-talk your way through this assembly language program. That's probably the easiest place to start.